All right, and welcome to this video on Two Point Perspective. This was a long time coming, and uh, I'm going to try to get through it because there is a lot to teach you. So this is going to be part one on the Two Point Perspective. Why part one? Because as I say, there's a lot to teach you guys, and I'm trying to break this down to where it is uh, the simplest way that I can to teach you. So first of all, we have to go back to a One Point Perspective before we move into two point and I don't want to keep you guys long in the one point so let's go ahead and do that so we can go ahead and jump to the second stage all right first of all what is perspective uh, Brian's definition and this is not Webster's this is Brian's definition and I wanted to be the easiest way possible is perspective is the way you see something versus the way I see something okay because it's what I see versus what you see is going to be different. So this is why I have this example of these three guys here and they are all staring at this table, the same table, but this guy's standing up, he's on his knees and this guy is laying down. So they're staring at the same table, but they see it differently. So each one of them's perspective is different on that table. So from there, let's go to the eye line. And a lot of times in perspective, they say your horizon line. But what the eye line is, let's just say you wore some glasses. And let me get a piece of paper and I'll give you a better definition of that. If you took some, you wore some glasses, and these are my glasses, and you drew a line right across those glasses, everywhere you looked, you would see that line. So that would represent your eye line in perspective. So if you looked out, say if you were in your yard and you looked out into your yard and you didn't look up and you saw a bird flying over you, you would see the bottom of that bird. And if you saw a little mouse crawling under you, this is a computer mouse, then you would see the, t the, top, the top of that, that mouse. So this is a lot to do with perspective you know, your, your view, your eye line view. And forgive me if I stumble over my words at the beginning, because as I say, there's a lot on my mind and I'm trying to get out to get you guys on the right page. So with that, let's step back a little bit more to one point perspective. Have you ever, let me move this. Have you ever drew a picture like this or saw somebody that drew a picture like this. Maybe you were young or you could still be young and you drew a picture like this. You drew your house and your trees and your, your birds and you know maybe some smoke coming out your chimney and you drew your sun with the energy lines coming from your sun. Well, if you ever drew that, this is the basis for perspective, especially, well, one point, two point perspective. It's just the basis of perspective. How is that? Let's go and find out. Let's just say you took that sun of yours that you drew with the energy lines radiate, radiating out of them and you continue to shrink it until it became a point, but you kept the lines that radiated out of it. That is your guidelines. These are your guidelines. This is the basis for perspective. These lines that come from this point. Now on your paper somewhere, and say this is your paper. On your paper somewhere, you would have to have that point. It could be anywhere on your paper, anywhere you decide to put it. But wherever you put that point is where your eye line is going to run across. And remember the glasses. So that point is going to be somewhere on this line, which is your eye line. Now, two point perspective, and I'm jumping a little ahead will have two points, usually on the opposite sides of that line, whereas one point will just have one point on the line, and you have your energy lines radiating out of them. Now, for two-point perspective, you have two with a lot of lines radiating out of them. So that makes it a lot harder than one-point perspective. So let's continue the lesson from here. All right, so now you know what an eye line is. Um, the horizon line, which is basically what they call the same thing. Your eye line is going to be that line that runs right across your eyes. And your horizon line, which is this. Your horizon line is that line 
that uh, where your sky touches the ground. So let's just say if this was the ocean and you stood out, you know, on the, the, the beach or the, the bank of the water and you looked out as far as you could see where you couldn't see any more water, but you could see the sky here. Let's just say the sun started to rise, you know, from the from the um, water, you know, that would be your horizon line, which is where the sky touches the land. Now, the problem that I have, and this is just me now, what if you are drawing a picture and you're in space somewhere, you know, is there a, a, a horizon line? So, or if you're in a cave or if you're underwater, so no matter where you go or how you see, you'll always have an eye line. So to me, it's just easier to say the eye line. Now, from here, let's do this. All right, now that we know what our eye line is and you have to forgive me for pausing, I'm pausing the camera because I have so much stuff laid out before me that I wanna teach you guys and uh, I keep thinking of new things so I jump off the lesson and it kind of throws me off, but I want to make sure you guys have it. And I'm trying to not teach you the traditional way. I'm trying to teach you the easy way. So now that we know what our eye line is, which is the line where your eye sees something, the same way if you took a camera, I don't know how to draw a camera right about now, and you took a picture of something, you know, where would you place that camera? Say like if you were taking a picture of a vase, and it had some flowers in it. You know, how high would you have the camera? Would you tilt the camera down? You know, would you tilt the camera up or would you get straight on it? So that's the same thing as the eye line, you know, camera line, eye line. So we have your eye line and with one point perspective, let's just say we'll put the, I don't wanna use that line, let's do this. One point perspective, you have your eye line, you have your point here. You have your energy lines, which are your guidelines to everything so we'll just use these two lines here and all your lines are going to converge onto this one point and that's the that's the one point perspective so if i took these two lines here these two energy lines is which i like to call it for my younger students because they can remember that and you turn that into and everybody have seen the, the pictures of the train tracks you know that go back in space as they would say and it disappears at that point every all your lines will disappear at this one point so if I drew a building here and the side of the building they would go back to that point as well maybe not this guy but this guy would go all the way back to that point and you would just chop it in half like that so that's your one point perspective any line you had that's not a vertical or horizontal line would follow these energy lines back to that one point or a circle oval would follow these lines back to this one point all right i think we'll jump ahead to two point perspective now the easiest way possible all right so if you draw a box like so and forgive me for turning my paper but I turn my paper when I draw because it's easier and I say this in most of my videos to pull your pencil than to push your pencil so whenever you draw turn your paper and you can pull your lines better make your lines better but I, I'll try to stop moving it so we have your box here nope I have to move it sorry and to do just your basic box you have your square I don't want to go ahead of myself let me slow down you have your square now you take your square, you just extend those lines just a little straight out and then down. And then you have your side of your box. That's your basic flat box that you can see the side of. Now, if you wanted to do a box in one point perspective, let's say we'll use this line here. You do your square on your line. like that and then on the sides instead of bringing it straight out like we did on this one bring it back into a triangle to that point to that one point and then chop it off right there as far as you want you know you could have it this long you could have it that long 
but you just chop it off somewhere there and let's get rid of these and then you color that or just shade that just to, to show you now that's one point perspective that's doing a box in one point perspective now you always see boxes 99% of the time anytime you see a perspective uh, book or video they're talking about boxes and why do we do boxes and I don't know my my terminology or history lesson or what what little bit I do know I believe is that when we came out of the cave and we decided to make houses for ourselves we started cutting trees down and it was just easier to put four pieces of wood together and build up a square wall to protect us so you always have your square houses so why would you put you know round furniture in a square house so basically everything we built is usually a square or rectangle that's the main shape so that's what we use so that's what perspective is basically based on is squares so let's do a two point and a two point perspective is and I'll do it without the guidelines because it is kind of far away you have your square no nope. I'm sorry let's go back I still so much stuff running through my head without the guide I put the guidelines I put a short one there for you now you want your corner first which is let's say this corner the center corner one line go back to a triangle to this point and this is your this is your one point and this is your second point this is your two points perspective and then you chop off right there same way with the other side you go back a little triangle on the side of the box and then you chop it off right there now you've just done a box in two point perspective and let's erase this do you need the guidelines to draw it no you don't but if you're going to put anything else in there and it has to be in two point perspective yes you do because if any lines go wrong and I don't let's see if I can draw a wrong line I'm so used to drawing it's kind of hard to do wrong if you do a wrong line in here then you, it, you can tell that it doesn't really fit that box does not fit with that box because it's just it just doesn't fit so two-point perspective box All right, in two-point perspective, you always start out with your corner line. And as I said earlier, uh, do you do you need those lines to to draw? No, not all the time. But as I say, you can you can kind of eyeball it by just doing something like that, and then chop off your sides, and then you have you know your house. But once you once you start adding more to it see like that that corner is wrong you know so a professional would you know chew you up for that but no if you're just playing around no you don't really need that but if you want to start adding more to that yes you would because this line is higher than that one so anything else that you drew and if it fell on the the right lines it would throw this box off so let's do uh an above and below one as I talked about earlier with the glasses and the bird and the mouse so you always want to start off with your corner so I'm gonna do one above the line your 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 eye line and maybe the points won't be that far away I don't think I want them that far away so you always start out with your corner and then you do your triangles to your point and I'll use this point here because I as I said I don't want to go that far away so come down and this is why I turn my paper because my wrist is just not in the right position then you chop off your sides I don't say chop off let's just say you determine where you want your sides of your cube and I keep saying box cube to go so once you have your size then you want to work with your bottom so this point is always going to go opposite this one is going to go here this one's going to go there so 
you want to take this and you want to go to that point here. And as I said, every line other than a vertical, horizontal, or a line making a circle will run off to one of your points. And the same thing with this line. If you want to finish off that bottom, this line goes to that point. And then you have a box, a box, I keep saying box, a cube floating in the air. So that it would be the same way if you reversed it to go under. And that's easier than drawing. I just thought of that just a second ago. It's the same thing. You just going right to your lines and you'll see the, the what is this? This is the top of your, your cube because we reversed it. Take it back. You have the bottom. And that was kind of cheating, so let's just do this. Let's go ahead and do this. Find your line again. Triangle. And I did a commercial for, uh, as a long time ago, for a website, I think it was, something I advertised on the commercial. And the guy who helped me, who put the thing together, he said that if you do something three times or say it three times, then people will remember it. It's like if you hear a commercial and it says, call 555-903, whatever. And they always say that number over and over again. And that used to bug me. But then he was saying, you know, once you say it three times, people usually get it. So, you know, I understand that. And that's why, usually why I try to teach something. I'll say something over and over again, or I'll draw it over and over again so that people can get it. And you determine where your edges are and chop it off. From here, this point, you're going to go opposite. And from this point, you want to go opposite. And then you have your above cube and below cube, which was the easy way, cheating by turning it upside down, which was kind of a neat trick. So, and if it's on your line, if it's on the center line, you won't see the top or the bottom. It will be just like that. Now, a lot of times in perspective, especially when you see a lot of cityscapes, people and I say this is your paper this is your your whole sheet of paper a lot of artists I saw and there's your line would do a point here and the point here would not be far enough away for them so they would take the paper of uh, the um, line and extend it out way out on the table so if this was like the drawing table they usually took a piece of tape and they first of all they would tape the paper down and that's the only time that I would say you cannot move your paper is when you're doing perspective. Any other time I say, hey, twist and turn your paper, but doing perspective in a ruler, and that's maybe why I don't like it because it takes away the freedom of drawing. But anyway, they would take a piece of tape and they would run that line on that tape and their second uh, line vanishing point would be way out here on the table somewhere. That way they could draw, you know, whatever building or, you know, whatever they that they might have needed to make it long enough to fit. So, you know, and that's something else you might you might find that you run into a problem where this line or this point is too close to that point. So you go ahead and you take it off your paper and you use your ruler. Of course, you, you're gonna have to use a ruler on all of this, which I neglected to use so far. But eventually, if you do this, you're gonna have to use a ruler. Now, when you do your points, you don't want your points too close to each other Let's just say that might not be close enough. I'll do a box, I'll do a building here, and your triangle, 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 and you chop it off. And that's not too shabby, but it's still too close to do, you know, a building. It's kind of off perspective, especially if you do a tall building. Let's do a tall one, and it would have to go to this point. And I'll erase some of that in a minute. And then here's your sidelines. You know, it's still a building, but if it was supposed to be a square building, more of a square rectangle building, your points are too close. But if you move, now you could probably have one on the side this close, but if you take the other one and you move it, and where's the top of my building here? And here, and you're just drawing a triangle. Get rid of this. And put this here. 
that would be a lot better because you can always have your side of one side of your building extremely short but you need a, a opening on the other side all right we'll get you three get my three lines and hopefully this will work out depending on the point where you put your vanishing point let's say we have your your corners of my buildings so if I put my vanishing point here and here and do my triangles and I kick myself for not using a ruler forgive me because I should be using a ruler for all of this but it would just take a little more time and I'm trying to make these videos short your edges your corner or sides would look like this let's just say I have this here and I move this one in here. Use your triangle, 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 triangle. And it would bring your, your sides in. So if I had this one here, and it's almost like the same thing I showed you. The, the, the closer your points come in, the more it changes the shape of your cube i don't want to say building but your cube like that let's erase this because that's too close so by just bringing your points in you can dramatically change the shape and let's put this one straight down since the others are straight down you change the shape of your cube building apartment, whatever it is you want to draw. So up to now, we've only been using a few lines for two point perspective. And let's go ahead and do something using the ruler. So we can get this one right to a degree and I'll put this in the middle again put this one in the middle two point let's do something and add a few more lines and in the beginning I told you about the like what I what I call your energy lines radiating off of your point and these are your guidelines now when you have two point perspective you have two points of course with with these energy lines radiating off of them but the thing is, they will all end up crisscrossing one another. And that makes it crazy. And that's where you get to the hard part because you have to keep track of each one of these lines as they intersect one another. And, you know, it, it, it works out. It, it's easy. Once you have it, the picture becomes easier to draw. But it's the fact that you have to make sure everything hits that point, you know, because you can see the lines are, are missing the point and in here are squares. You can see that, but you know, they're off because I didn't hit that point. But that gets to the hard part. That's why you should use your ruler. Now with this one, this picture, I'm just gonna do something. Let's go. Here, you find your corner. And this is why I don't want to use a ruler because it, 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 it really eats up a lot of time. So, I gotta get away from using the ruler. I didn't want to use the ruler, but I'll try to eyeball it as best I can. Try not to be precise. I'm just trying to teach you guys how to do it because I believe that art is 70% knowledge and 30% uh, talent or doing. Let's see now here I'll chop off my sides and let's say I want to make a let's take this higher. Not so much a just a building some type of a building and as you see, it's already off because of the line. And I'll get rid of this line. 
and I'll bring these two lines up. Now for this, let's say I did a door here and then did another door here and I don't want to use that line because that's kind of cheating. So I'll take it above the, the eye line and this is where I would have to use the ruler here to here. Now, if I want an opening in that door, I would have to go from this point to that point. Just a small opening. A little more lead going like so. And then I would go up. And remember, I said any line other than the vertical, horizontal, or oval, or circle, would have to run across one of these lines, or it would have to run to that point. So from here... If I wanted the interior wall, I would have to go back to this point again. Just let's say about right here. So this is kind of like a uh, looking like a what do you call it? Like a tune-up tune-up garage or something. And if I did a brick wall, let's just say I did a brick wall. Each line would have to come to this point here. Each what is this? This is a horizontal line, I think, or is it vertical? Horizontal line. It would come to that point. Even that one would work. So if I wanted to do bricks and the vertical lines would not follow those lines. Where is that? So you have your interior, which is a brick wall. And the same, if I put, let's say I put a sign up here, let's say it was a tune-up shop or whatever. So I put a sign and I should have used that too. But as I said, the, the whole taping your paper down thing is very constricting. And then you would go back here again to the point. And then you put your name of your sign, but like, as I say, each letter, each letter you did would have to go back there. So if you did an M, and I have a line already, so that's cheating. And the other one will go back here. Even this part right here has to go back, the bottom of your M. So that's a lot. So in the same thing, if you put a sign on this side, but I won't put a sign on that side. Let's just say I'll put a window or two on that side. You determine how high you want your windows. Line there. Line here. And then let's break these windows apart. Let's say here and here. And this won't be a window. Now, if I wanted to put, and you won't really see too much of that. Yeah, you'd see the top. So from this corner to there, you would see some of that. And then it would go down and across. And this one would go there. I'm not going to, yeah, use the ruler. Like that. And then you could... Say that, and it it goes on and on, and I'll I'll stop using the ruler, and I'll just do this a little quicker, because it, it has to go. I'll eyeball it, and then this. If I want to do a doorway here, it would go to that line, and then up. And if I did a wall here, it would go to that line. And maybe I put another little door in here, but the little door, unless I opened it like so, it would go back to that line here. And I'll darken this up. You know, and that, or that could be a little vending machine or something sitting inside of the building. Now, 
I think I want to stop here because I want if I start doing things like putting roofs and stuff on and using the lines, then that'll that'll take you too far. And I'll, I'll save that for part two of that one. But there is a lot more and I will get my head together for part two to teach you guys. And I still want to teach you like the easiest way possible. Not so much tradition because I want you guys to actually get it to walk away with knowing what you're doing. All right, and just before I close this out, let's just say I did a street. It would come straight off of this line. Sidewalk. You know, and the lines for the sidewalk would come there. And if you had a car, the car would go back to that line. I just want to show you guys real quick, you know, how much you can make out of these things. I mean, it's fun once you get it going but you you definitely have to learn it it's something that you have to learn and get right you know because if you throw one line off you know the whole thing is off and this line would go back here to this car and the same thing if i put another car here the front of that car would have to go there same thing with the back of the car lines go straight up and you notice they're just blocks they're blocks Locks, these are these are rectangles, Brian, rectangles. And these lines would go back there too. I'm just I'm just cheating right now. And this line would go there too. But I'm just cheating to be quick about it. And as I said, the only lines that won't are the your circle lines, your vertical and horizontal lines. Those are the only ones that won't go back to that point. So I'll wrap this one up for now. This is part one and look for part two. As I say, as soon as I get my head unscrambled and then I get it together and I'll be back to show you. All right.